Everyone wants to quit homeschooling in November and February. Have you heard the phrase? <coughs> I believe it was Susan Weisbauer who coined that. And for us, some years, it's wrong true. <laughs> for other years, it hasn't. But it's not just those months that can be hard. And while encouragement is great just to keep going through those hard times, sometimes we just need practical advice. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I did put up last February a video about um, kind of homeschooling when uh, an encouragement, more encouragement um, about homeschooling when it was hard. And <laughs> ironically enough, it was right before COVID. So that was um, fortuitous timing, one might say. Um, so that video plus a couple others that kind of go along with this whole theme will be linked down there. So when you are done, be sure to go check that out. Um, but before I start, I would love to know what advice you give to others, to other moms or to yourself when things are hard. Encouragement or like practical tips, leave them down there. Um, so when, when it's hard, whether it's a day or the month or season or sometimes for the year, your most important task is to get through the year with your relationships in debt. I talked about this in a recent video about why I think relationship first, relationships need to be put first. Okay. So when that needs to be your overarching thought. What can I do to preserve the relationship individually with my kids and as a family unit? Because at the end of the day, it's not going to matter if you've hit all the boxes if your family's in crumples or feels like it's in crumples. As for practical stuff, let's talk about that. What can you switch out for your curriculum, at least for a pause? Okay, so not necessarily saying ditch the curriculum, but for example, um, can you give them a stack of National Geographics, you know, depending on what age they are, and let them read those for history and geography for the week or for the next two weeks? Um, can you do something like a Tinkerbox or one of those other kits? for science and let them play with that. Or give them all electronics and screwdrivers and let them figure out what they can figure out. Um, give them a box of materials from around the house and let them build things. Um, audiobooks instead of a read aloud. If, if they're learning to read, maybe pause on the curriculum of learning to read and just spend time reading aloud to them and listening to audiobooks and then when you pick back up you'll be amazed at how much progress they've made in that short time while their brain's been working on all those things they've been learning plus the vocabulary rich environment they've been surrounded in through your books and audiobooks I am a firm believer in use of audiobooks. So don't feel like if you feel like you can't add read alouds to your show to yourself right now, even easy ones, audiobooks are fantastic. Um, my notes are down here, but my eyes are uh, getting older. <laughs> um, oh, one other thing for history and science. I have a list of winter themed documentaries from mostly from Amazon Prime and Netflix. I have a link down there. Take a couple weeks and just do those instead of history or science or both. Spend some time on the couch. Easy to take with you if you need to do it in the car, etc. Now to go along with this video on Saturday I'm going to put out a video on 
our minimum must do. So when things are busy or when things are hard, what are my basics? What do I want to make sure that we get done? So if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that. If you want to click the little bell, you'll get notified when new videos come out. Um, so check that one out for what it looks like, what our homeschool days look like, what it's hard. Um, at the start of each day, okay, you know, when we're planning, if we plan like a week at a time or a month at a time, sometimes we can set ridiculously large goals that aren't going to, that aren't going, well, in my case at least, that I will probably forget about until Thursday or Friday and then realize that I haven't met any of them and I need to get moving and there's no time to do it all on Friday. So when seasons are hard, I like to do a daily top three or daily top five, okay? And scale these down. Keep your expectations <laughs> realistic, truly realistic. So one day you may have um, read a chapter of something, read aloud, story of the world, whatever. Um, complete a moving beyond the page spelling lesson, which if you don't know, it's an online master based spelling program that I absolutely love. I've done a video about it. I will link it. Um, complete a page of math and put my books on. That might be all you set as your goals for the day. Yeah, it's not much. But when life is hard, that that can be a lot. If you can get more done, fantastic. But if you can't, you, you've met a basic amount of stuff that you can look at the list and say, look, we did it all. And that's going to be good enough. But my big tip on this one is to make sure that you, when you're writing your goals for the day, do two things. One, remember what yesterday, how yesterday's list went. Did you schedule too much? Did you schedule too little? And look at that day's calendar. Sometimes in my mind, what can get done is really not going to be realistic when I look at the calendar. And when you're in a season of life where things are hard, it's it can be harder to think clearly on all of that. So make sure that you're doing both of those things when you make this list. Okay, my next tip is about taking care of yourself. Because, you guys know, you're the mom, and if you're falling apart, things around the house just don't go as smooth. Falling apart in whatever that looks like. I'm noticing being like a, you know, in whatever way, okay? If you're not doing your, if you're not at your best, the house and your home isn't at your best. So, and I say all of these things like coming from personal experience, so no shame. <laughs> okay. One more serving of fruit or vegetables than what you currently eat. If you most days don't eat any, just add one. If you already eat four or five, great. A bit. Sleep. Just an extra 30 minutes in bed. Okay, I'm not even talking about being asleep. Just be in bed an extra 30 minutes. Preferably at night because, you know, with your, birth, your cycle, like the, whatever, your body cycles. I am clearly not speaking <laughs> fantastic right now, but you know what I mean. Um, just an extra 30 minutes. Okay, listen to an audiobook. Listen to a podcast, not all scrolling on your phone, not playing games, um, <laughs> but just that extra time where your eyes are closed, whether you're sleeping or reading, whatever you're doing, you're getting your body in there and telling it that it deserves to rest. Um, turn off the computer 15, 20, 30 minutes earlier than you normally do at night. This is something that I am terrible. In my ideal world, I would turn it off, then read for a half hour or so, and then go to bed. 
I don't always do that. But when I do, I notice how much better I sleep, how much quieter my brain is before I go to bed. Um, you know, if you, if you had a friend who was having a hard time, you're not going to expect that she does everything perfect with caring for herself, right? You're going to give her some grace. And during the hard times, you need to be that friend to yourself. So encourage your friend to take a short walk or do a short vid yoga video or eat that extra apple for the day or... Go read a book or a magazine that has been on her to-do list for, or her reading list for two years now. Be that friend to yourself and remind yourself that, that while it may seem like a, a, I don't say a waste of time, but sometimes like to me, I can feel like it's wasted time for me to sit down and read when I could be planning or doing some research on whatever thing is hard right now or whatever. But don't do that. Be better than what I am. <laughs> because you, you matter too in all of this. And you, when mom is working, mom's doing well, working at her best, things just seem to flow better. In that same regard, um, one of my biggest tips for meals, one, grocery uh, pickup, grocery pickup is, of course, can be a lifesaver time-wise. Two, utilize your lunch time to get whatever prep work you can done for dinner. Because especially when times are hard, finding that energy at night after you know five o'clock rolls around and you're tired can be hard so whatever you can do at lunch brown the meat cut the meat cut the veggies what make the sauce whatever it is that you need to do that you can do at lunchtime i absolutely suggest it almost every day of my lunchtime includes working on dinner um even when even when it's not hard i still do because five o'clock i do not often have a whole lot of energy for such shenanigans as meal planning or cooking. Um, and my last suggestion for you is to send the kids outside. Even if you can't join them, send them outside. Outside time is never wasted. They are learning. They are moving their bodies. They are enjoying the fresh air. And that can do wonders everybody's spirit and everybody's motivation if you can join them and go outside and play with them for even five minutes or take your book outside and read whatever you can do um i'm just a big believer in even if math doesn't get done or history isn't done go outside when all else fails go outside even now, like when my kids were young, that was often my default. Like, <laughs> just go play outside. Um, and they they love to be outside. But even now, last week, it was last week, we were getting ready to leave someplace. And my boys were arguing about, I don't even know what. And probably not anything important. But I was frazzled. I was listening to them argue. And I sent them outside. I mean, they now 13 and 10 and I just go outside and play and I told him to go run up and down our road three times and they came in and they were laughing and hopped right into what we we're supposed to be doing and headed out the door it's just this reminder to me that even now outside can just be a just enough of a break for everybody <laughs> that it's a fallback position for me. Check out the links down below. I'll see you in the next video.